How you doing? Good. Just a couple of quick notes uh, before we before we get into main reason we set up this interview this morning. We're hearing a lot about West Nile virus and it affecting some areas in Texas. Have you seen any signs of that uh, in the emergency department at Pazovan? We haven't diagnosed any cases of West Nile, although that is sometimes a little bit tricky to do because for most people that get a case of West Nile virus, it's just a general flu-like illness, kind of some aches and pains, maybe a headache and fever and just general malaise. And a lot of times we don't do the formal testing on those patients because the symptoms are so nonspecific. So it's quite possible that we have seen somebody with it but didn't do the tests to really truly diagnose it. Because most people, it's quite uh, a self-limiting disease. If it becomes more uh, serious, obviously, that's when it becomes a little more challenging and then that's when the diagnosis of the West Nile virus may come into play. Correct. So the serious uh, cases of West Nile is whenever you develop uh, meningitis and encephalitis. That's where you get an infection uh, a lot on the lining of the brain called the meninges or an infection actually in the brain itself, and we call that encephalitis. And in those cases, we would do a, a lumbar puncture or a spinal tap, or we would actually draw cerebral spinal fluid um, off of a lumbar puncture and then the lab would analyze that for us, and that's when we would identify West Nile virus. Are you getting any specific instructions from any health organization with regards to being on the lookout for West Nile? We uh, occasionally get um, email reports from the uh, uh, CDC, and they have a, a monthly report called uh, Morbidity and Mortality, where they list some of the uh, current trends in infectious disease. And we have gotten a couple of reports that say that uh, this summer um, there have been a few more cases of West Nile than they anticipated. Um, I don't believe we've had anything specific for central Illinois, but it's been sort of a national report. And along those lines of uh, timeliness, uh, we're hearing about the swine flu coming out of some of the, well, what we've noted are the county fairs and even the state fair. Any reports here, anything uh, noteworthy? Um, I don't know of any cases that have been documented uh, in central Illinois. We do get those reports weekly from the CDC um, identifying the specific counties um, throughout the Midwest states where this has been uh, identified. It, um, again, so far the, the, the symptoms for it have been fairly, uh, again, nonspecific. And so a lot of times we don't do um, the uh, specific tests if the disease seems to be mild and self-limiting. Um, but I don't know of any specific cases uh, diagnosed in our area. Now, the main reason we had Dr. Boston on this morning, and he's probably thinking, Gary, you know, you asked me to be on for this reason, and now you've asked me two other questions non-related to it. But the reason we wanted him on this morning was the, uh, I, I don't think you'd say outbreak of whooping cough, but the resurrection, the the reappearance of the whooping cough. Yeah, and this, this is something, <clears throat> excuse me, that has been diagnosed in our area. Cass County has a confirmed case of whooping cough. Um, we uh, tend to use the, the, the phrase uh, pertussis. Um, that's the bacteria that causes this disease. And it's a bacteria that's only found in humans, unlike things like the swine flu or West Nile, which can be transmitted from other animals to humans. Um, <clears throat> and this is a disease that if we can get the population well vaccinated, you can essentially eliminate the exposure to it, which is what had happened in the past. Um, where there was very few, it was a very rare condition, it was almost hardly ever diagnosed because uh, a larger percentage of the population was vaccinated against it. Um, we've seen sort of a slip in the, in the percentage of people that are vaccinated, and as a result of that, we've seen a reoccurrence in I am. I apologize. Well, that's okay. No problem. We were talking about the uh, the the whooping cough, and as we uh, as we lost you, I started to ask the question with regards to whooping cough. It's a shot we used to get on a regular basis. Did people stop getting the uh, the shot? No, it, it's it was still required. There were people for various uh, concerns did not get their children or themselves immunized. Um, there are certain um, religious groups, and people had a concern. Um, with the risk of autism, um, which has been shown to be not related to vaccinations in any way at all. Um, so there was a period of time there where there were people that were choosing uh, to not get vaccinated. Um, 
And it wasn't a large percentage, but it was a large enough number of people that it allowed the bacteria to sort of reappear in our population. What are the signs of whooping cough? Again, generally it starts out like a cold. It's a runny nose, a cough, a sore throat. Um, but unlike sort of the typical cold, um, after a couple of three days, it doesn't go away. It escalates and gets worse, and you get swelling in the glands of your neck. And what happens is, is people have these extreme coughing fits, and that they'll try to sort of gasp and catch their breath after one of these coughing fits, and that's when we get the typical whooping sound as they're trying to inhale to get their next breath of air. And in, in an infants, it can be particularly dangerous, and it's not uncommon for young children under six months of age to actually get pneumonia with it, end up mm. in the hospital, and a certain percentage of them, um, it can be a fatal disease. Does this only affect kids? Uh, adults will get it, but typically most adults um, have had at least some immunization, um, and, and it's a result of having you know at least some, some immunity. It typically is a more of a, a dry, hacking cough that will last weeks, and you don't get as sick with it. Now, we're, we're back in school. A lot of us are back in school. We're getting back to school uh, this week. It, talk about the importance of getting the necessary vaccinations. Well, it, it's extremely important. Um, the greater percentage of the population that is vaccinated against these diseases, the safer and healthier it is for everybody, the less likely it is that these germs can circulate amongst the population. And in Illinois this year, um, the Illinois Department of Public Health has uh, made it a requirement that um, children going into 6th grade and 10th grade, um, I'm sorry, 6th grade and ninth grade, have to have a booster for uh, tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis. Uh, the importance of this is, is that your immunization status can sort of wane over time. You sort of lose your immunity, and you occasionally need a booster shot to um, sort of boost up your immunity to these diseases. All right, Dr. Boston, we appreciate your time this morning. Very comprehensive. Uh, the, the flu season is still a few months away, but when everybody gets back into school, that seems to be a good breeding ground for all kinds of things that are passed from person to person. Any early indications as to what kind of a flu season we're going to have? No, they haven't really said too much other than that there is this new uh, variant of the flu that they found this summer, um, but there hasn't been really indication Typically, the flu that we get in North America comes from the flu that's in Asia right now. And so I haven't heard too many reports on what they're predicting for this fall and winter. Okay, you ready for the high school football season? Absolutely, I'm ready. <laughs> okay, all right. Dr. Boston, thank you for your time this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Dr. Scott Boston with the Passive and Hospital Emergency Department. Uh, just Well, we've noticed in the news here of late I thought it would be a good time to bring on someone to talk about it. Dr. Boston's a good representative from Pazovan Hospital, and we appreciate his time.